Hey guys, in the video I have for you today, this is one of those mobile homes that have the mini split systems underneath. I originally went out there, found it not cooling. It was acting like it was low on refrigerant, but they had no filters in and the filter grills were horrible. So I turned the system off and let the thing thaw out. It had frozen up back to the condenser returned and there was a puddle of water underneath and i said you know what i'll come back tomorrow let it dry out a little bit so i came back again the next day and this is my trip out there i'm going underneath thinking i need to clean the coal so that's the backstory on this here we go All right, there's still a little bit of water, but nothing like before. Okay, that was soaking wet. My coal is right here. So let's undo these screws and see if we can't get to it and clean it. Stripped out.
That's lovely. I need to get that out. What in the world is going on? Is there a screw in here somewhere? That's my drain pan. <clears throat> I swear. Sometimes I gotta work in some bad conditions. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get wet. I don't look that dirty. I did find this in the duct work, but that's that's in the supply. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's in the supply. <sighs> All right. So if the coils aren't dirty, my main problem is those filter grills, <clears throat> and that's much easier to clean.
reason that drain pan was full of water is because it was solid ice. I turned it off. It has a pump that pumps it out. All that ice melt went into the drain pan and it couldn't pump it out. Y'all see they had a tree come down and nearly took this one down with it. Right now it feels like they're cooling good. All right, so we know the coils are mostly clean. That is not something I knew until I got out here and got a good look at them. I ended up getting soaking wet anyway. So maybe I should have just crawled around in the mud the last time. Both of these are going to be suction metering devices in the condenser. So we're not going to get a liquid line or high pressure. But we can get a super heat. I've got a low superheat. Let's check on the other one. Still the same thing. Even lower. 3.8 degrees superheat. But these pressures have me a little bit worried. As hot as it is in there. I might want to add a little bit. I'm gonna drop some probes inside and hope the kids don't run off with them. All right, I am, I don't, about a pound and a half that was in this drum I'm sitting on. And I've got an 18.3 degree temperature drop. I still got a little bit of pressure in the drum. These can actually ice up a little bit, so zero subcooling. That's not what, really what I'm shooting for. There we go, that's about all that was in that drum. <clears throat> Typically, these small ones can ice off. I do look for a little bit of superheat coming back on these. <clears throat> I do think my pressure should be a little bit higher. As you see, I've got two degrees superheat. I'm 
but I'm at 40 degrees saturation temperature, which is pretty good. Before I was like at 115 to 110. I might add just a little bit more. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that little video. Some of it was shot with that fisheye lens and I decided I don't really like that. I happen to be cleaning out my van for, for what's probably the first time in a month and a half, two months, because I just hadn't had time. And um, if you like these kinds of videos, how about like and subscribe? And I'll catch you on the next one.